Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, just going to do a quick little video today just on my sampling workflow. It's just an easy way to kind of get ideas from uh, analog or, or outboard hardware into your uh, your project that you're working on, just in a simple way. Now, there's better ways to do this um, and more advanced ways to do this in terms of creating a sort of more permanent sound library. For that, I would typically go and multi-sample things properly, have them sort of more organized and whatever. But this is just like when you kind of in the flow and you want to get something from your hardware into Bitwig and be able to work with it later on, maybe change up the patterns and stuff. Um, obviously, if you're keeping things in MIDI like this, it's not always the most reliable in terms of timing, um, but also it then writes off that synth to um, not be used with anything else. I mean, you can save presets on that, but it's obviously then if it's just playing back, there's one tone coming out of that. So I often want to just print stuff um, to audio as quickly as possible. You can do this in audio, but then it becomes a little bit more problematic later on when you want to change up chords and things like that. So this is just a really quick way with one little trick um, that's going to give you a more convincing recording, especially of something that's analog like this. Uh, so I'm just working on a little project here. I just started the little loop now. Really simple. And I'm wanting to do this sort of bass here. So that's actually the mode messenger playing right now and it's been sampled uh, into this project. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to redo this again now just to show you my workflow with getting something like this into a project. So obviously we're going to need an audio channel or a hardware instrument channel just to get this in. I currently don't actually even have the MIDI plugged in right now. Um, so we're just going to do this over audio. I've got my audio set up here. We just want to go to select the mode messenger. Let's just uh, arm that and I've created this bass sound. And I'm pretty much just going to get this as is. It's a one shot. And I'm not really planning on doing much more with it. Um, if I was intending to automate stuff a lot more, I might think about different ways of, of kind of bringing this in. But I just want to get this in quickly and be able to play with the notes without timing issues and then be able to move on to another sound from that as well. I'm not even going to bother recording on this track. I've just got this audio track open so that I can get this signal through. I'm in a G right now. And... The real key to this is, now the key to this is, if you sample just a single one shot like this from that keyboard and put it into a sampler, uh, you're really kind of negating the reason why you want to have an analog synth. A lot of it's because of the movement and the oscillators are free running constantly and there's just this live feeling to it. Um, you're going to lose that if you have a piece of audio that's repeating itself over and over again. Uh, in a situation like this, like a bass line. So the thing that we want to be able to do is to create a round robin uh, sample patch for this uh, sound that we're going to be using, uh, which is basically going to skip through different recordings on each key press. Like I said, we don't even really need to hit record. Yeah, we could actually just, if we just uh, have everything stopped right now, we could just go and hit our project record up at the top there. Simple as that. I've recorded my few notes with uh, a couple of variations in them now. So let's just go to the project recordings again, or the master recordings, I should say. And you'll see I've got a file here now with the recordings from the messenger. So now uh, what I'll do now is to just bring this into a new channel here. Just as a single sample, you can see it's loaded up the whole sample with the whole recording. Um, what we're going to do is go and convert this to a multi-sample, even though we don't have multiple samples, but we will do in a second. We're going to open up the editor here, and here's our um, sample that we've taken. And you can see uh, we can set up the start and end points for each individual sample in the multi-sample on the bottom here. We're going to start with just the one and come and grab our first note here. And this is really quick to do things, but we snaps to zero crossings as well. So it's just, it's pretty quick and easy to just select the notes that you want here. And there we go. 
We just need that. Now we're going to come over here and just duplicate this. So on the second one, we're going to just move this point to the next note. We're just going to duplicate this again. And you can see where we're going with this. Duplicate that again. And you should pretty much be free of any sort of pops and clicks because of the zero snapping that's on you. And you can turn that on and off here as well if you want uh, the zero crossing snapping. And let's do the last one just so we've got a nice selection of different notes in here. There we go. So now the trick with this is to, in your multi-sample here, come select all the notes that you have here. And they're scaling over the whole keyboard. That's fine. I'm pretty much only going to be using this around the keys kind of where it's sampled. I might change up the chord slightly, but then we'd be pitching it down just two or three notes, uh, which is going to be fine. We're not going to need a massive amount of multi-samples for that uh, to get the idea across. But the real thing that you want to get across is these multiple samples that are not triggering on the same phase all the time. So we could um, go and select all of these here, and all we need to do now is look at the zone logic for these samples here on the left-hand side. So we're just on all zones. Uh, if you wanted to, you could... Uh, you could group these if you were doing multiple samples. You might want to actually put these into a group. And you'll see if you come to the new group, you've got different zone logic for that new group. So each group that you have can have its own individual set of parameters for this. The one that we're really worried about, though, is for this whole group, every time a key is pressed, it should switch to a new sample. So we're going to go to zone logic, round robin. And listen to the difference. We'll take that off, always play. Now it's playing all of them at the same time. We could just turn down the gain for the last four samples. And just take a listen to the difference here now. That's with a single sample and it just ruins the whole sort of vibe, the whole sort of life of the, the patch is completely gone. Um, we'll bring these back up again and let's go and turn on the zone logic to round robin again. Take a listen to this. Sounds totally like the real thing does. That's because we're using a different sample on every every note. So you've got that that variance from from note to note, triggering at different phases with oscillators and the filter slightly sloppy on certain things as well. Uh, it really kind of conveys that that analog feel. And now it's just a case of um, bringing down the notes. And you can see, yeah, I've actually done some chord changes as well. And we'll just take a listen to this. You've even got, yeah, slight variations and stuff. You want to kind of just um, maybe keep the tails a little bit more uniform in this. Just bring in your ADSR and just tweak things a little bit. Of course, you can go and add additional filtering or effects to this if you wanted to. Maybe just add a little bit of compression on this as well. And probably just cut a little bit of the lows off. So now you are free to go ahead and it's, it's pretty low tax on your machine as well. It's just a sample playback now. There's no fancy synths going on here. And now you're also free to go and pitch that down and it doesn't sound bad at all. You're not really noticing the difference in that pitch at all. You could probably get away with even more extreme pitch shifting as well. I think maybe if you're going up, you're going to be, it's going to be more noticeable, obviously, because obviously the notes get shorter. Even down, it's not too bad.
One thing I did do uh, wrong here is um, I've actually didn't set the root key of the sample. We sampled it at G, which is what we are working in. Um, we can rectify that in the samples here. We're just going to select all of these and then make sure that the root is set to G. Currently, the notes that I've recorded in for that, I'm playing C's, but we actually, the rest of the track is G. So now we can just want to just get that one to be one up from there. So the root key should be G2, actually. There we go. Right, so now this is fixed as well. There we go. Cool, there you go. Nice, easy way to kind of get analog hardware into Bitwig really, really quickly. Just when you're kind of in the flow of things, and you just want to get an instrument in using your instruments over there. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Just to quickly just bang out a few of those little extra multi samples and switch on that round robin. It's going to give you way more convincing results when sampling analog hardware. All right, thanks guys. Uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button. Otherwise, go check out Patreon. Uh, there's a bunch of samples, goodies, other things there that you can go check out. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Cheers.